So we're starting off with geometric series, and like the arithmetic series, these are going to come with a new formula to learn. So take a look at what we have here. We have A1, that's the first term of a geometric series, uh, R the common ratio, and the number of terms, and we want a formula for how to add up these, these number of terms. If it's 10 terms, you would want a formula that saves you from the trouble of figuring out what all 10 terms are and then punching them in. So I'll just write that here. The formula that we're looking for is A1 times, and then we have this big fraction. And we have 1 minus R to the nth power divided by 1 minus R. Okay? So um, it can get a little dicey actually figuring out what this thing is, depending on what those variables are. Uh, if R is a decimal and you, you're just expected to plug it into your calculator, it's not too bad. Sometimes you have R with a, is, as a fraction and you have to figure out exactly what the sum is equal to in terms of fractions. That can be a little more complicated, but you really are just applying this single formula and whether it's difficult or easy just depends on the details of the numbers. Now, sometimes uh, you have an infinite series, and this is different from uh, an arithmetic infinite series. When you have an infinite arithmetic series, the numbers are going like, you know, 1, 5, uh, 9, 13, and so on forever. And you can see just looking at this, the numbers are increasing forever, so the sum of the numbers is going to be infinity. It's impossible to calculate. But it's different with a geometric series. And the reason is this. Uh, well, there's two examples. Uh, let's, let's talk about one geometric series that goes... Um, get my pen back here. 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on. And you see this one is increasing forever. So likewise, it's going to blow up just like the arithmetic series did. That's no good. This is called diverging. And the reason it's called diverging is because it's um, it's not coming to a point, right? It's exploding. It's it's not um, focusing down. So we would say it diverges when the absolute value of r is greater than one. So you can think of an example like this where r equals two, uh, but let's say it were r equal negative two. Okay, if, if r equals negative two, it's still diverging because the numbers are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And whether it's positive infinity or negative infinity, it's kind of hard to say. It's not important, though, because they're both uh, does not exist. So that's one example. Here's another example that I want you to consider. Let's say we have a geometric series that looks like this. 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and it goes on and on and on forever. <clears throat> this actually has a sum that we can calculate. Even though it's infinite numbers, it it actually does come to a, a point. You can calculate it. And we went over this a bit in class, so I won't linger on it here. Uh, but this is called converging because it converges to a point. And this is a special kind of geometric series. Um, you can actually model all sorts of things in the real world using infinite geometric series uh, that are converging. So there's a formula for this. And what I want you to do in reasoning through the formula is just think about this. Um, r to the n, I'm sorry, r to the infinity. How do we deal with that? Normally, you would say a number to the infinite power is infinite. But if that number is less than 1, uh, okay, if, if r greater than 1 is taken to the infinite, that doesn't exist. We've been over that one. But if r is less than 1, and you take that to the infinite power, that actually equals 0. And if you think about it, let's say r is 1 half. Well, 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, and on and on and on forever, these are going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They'll approach 0. So r to the infinite power actually does equal 0. And that makes this formula up here a whole lot simpler. We would say s to the infinite power equals a1 times... Um, well, 1 minus r to the n is 0, so it's just 1 minus 0 on top. It's just 1, uh, and that's 1 minus r, okay? And oftentimes, people don't even write the a1 there. They just pop the a1 up on top like this, okay? So that's uh, a1. Let me be a little nicer about this. That's an a, not a 9. Come on. There we go. This is a1 over 1 minus r, 
And that's only in the case, this is important, that's only in the case where it's converging. Okay, this does not apply to a diverging. So, just a couple of quick examples of what uh, sequences and series are, geometric and arithmetic. Take a look at these, what's the pattern? In this one right here, give me my pen. In this one right here, I can see that every number is six below the number before it. So this is an arithmetic sequence. Okay, and it's actually an infinite arithmetic sequence because of these little dots over here. Uh, next example, this right here, I can see that each number is multiplied by negative four compared to the number before it. This is an infinite uh, geometric, and actually it's a series because you can see those plus and minus signs. It's not just commas, it's not a list of numbers, it's actually uh, a list that goes on, a sum that goes on forever. Um, and likewise, for the other ones, you can see one of these is a finite because it has dots, but the dots are in the middle. So it has a fixed starting and end point. So that's a finite um, arithmetic series because it's adding things together. And in this other, this one right here, that's, uh, that's another infinite geometric series. Okay.